So good morning everyone, مساء الخير. أنا اسمي عصام حجي. My name is Asam Hagi, and I am from Egypt. And uh, but one of the things I want to mention. So we have the talk. Uh, I was born in Libya. So and I, I lived 12 years in my life in Tunisia. So Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt, the, the three of them, they are one part of my identity. And it's an amazing thing to be here. Uh, I just arrived from the airport, so I apologize for the, uh, the jet lag. But there is one thing very important uh, I want to say, that it's very important to inspire the young people. And uh, my life has changed. Uh, in a drastic way, in one day, when I find one paper, uh, uh, it, was, it was on the floor, and it has of it a picture of mouse. And that was, I think, uh, <coughs> I was at the age of 16 years old or 14 years old. And from that moment, I wanted to study more about this planet. I wanted to understand more about this planet. And I, I, was, I did not realize that one day I would be in the NASA Mars Exploration Program, neither to train the astronaut, uh, me who was in school, that was a really a, a very poor school, I would say. So if we may show, we have a video for you. I want you to introduce what we do in NASA, and specifically the landing on Mars. Who knows about the landing on Mars? Have everyone saw the landing on Mars? Okay, so this is very important. Uh, everything you will see in this video is real. We landed a rover on Mars, and this is the, the fourth landing we have on Mars. And uh, I remember when we, st when, we, when, when we started the project five years ago, everyone had thought, this is impossible. This is cannot be made. Everything you will see in this video, actually, is by all definition very crazy stuff. That will never happen. But when you see that video, how we landed on Mars, I want you to remember one thing: that the average, the age, the average age of people who work in the Mars exploration program is 31 years old. The average, the age of people who worked on the landing on the moon, the Apollo program, was 25 years old. This is mean that innovation is made always by young hand. Innovation is made always by people who believe they can go beyond themselves. Be innovation believe the people that can have Im the imagination. So I think let's start with the video. And that will show you what happened in November the uh, 18th when we landed on Mars. So that's the Curiosity rover we have seen. And that's when it leaves the, the, the Earth. And then we have the separation from the rocket and then it goes to Mars and starts to enter the atmosphere. If you can make the, the sound higher. So what you've seen here, if you think of it, it's very crazy. Landing a rover on another planet and just trying to understand uh, how this planet is evolving. So if we go on the slides, please. I don't know how to make the slides from here. Yes. So many of us may think that the space exploration is, is 
is, is something that we can live without, that it's more important to be a doctor or to be an engineer or to be many other, uh, many other jobs because these jobs are more respected in the society than the scientists in general. And this is not a misconception. This is, is it true? In fact, when I did, uh, when I started working in the space research, my mother until three years ago, that I, so I've been now 17 years working on space research, and only five years ago or three years ago, my mother started to understand what is my, my job. And, uh, and, and basically, my job is to find water on Mars. And let me tell you why this is, is the most important thing for all of us. So that this is, so you might think that water exists only on, on our planet. But water exists everywhere in the solar system. It's only in the liquid phase in our planet, but it's, uh, it's in the solid phase like ice and gas in many other planets of the, of the solar system, as you can see here. So why we need Mars? Uh, people would say we have so much important issues on Earth and why we really need to go to study water on Mars? Because water on Mars will tell us a lot about water on the Earth. Let me give you a few numbers about NASA. NASA is the largest investor in the water exploration and Earth observation. The annual the budget is, is, uh, is $19 billion. And basically, $2 billion, they go to, they go to, to the, the, the climate change, and, and $3 billion, they go to understand uh, the uh, water on Mars. If you compare this number to what we spent here, in the Arab world on finding water, 250,000 US dollar a year, which is basically 0.005 US dollar per person, which is very small number. So is it we, why we can't explore water in the right way? Uh, so let's compare oil versus water. So we are the largest producer of oil. We are, the, we are the poorest producer of water, but amazingly, we are the largest investor in the technique to explore oil and the latest invest, investor in the technique to find water. The only difference between water and oil is that both are natural resources, but water has no substitute. Oil can be substituted with solar energy, electrical energy, but water has not. So many people ask me, what is NASA? why we, NASA is so important, uh, where you come from, from NASA. So I wanted to explain a little bit, a brief about NASA. NASA is a national agency. It's not an international agency. It's an agency that have t -t 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 hand centers. The Jet Propulsion Lab, where I work, is one of them. And JPL has an amazing thing versus all the other NASA center. It's the only NASA center that can do everything from end to end. So we build space missions from zero to lunch, to the follow-up, to data analysis, to the science and publication. All this is done in one place. So we've been exploring many planets and uh, exploring the water in many environments for the last 40 years through 23 NASA missions and 40 NASA instruments that are in orbit. We studied many aspects of the Earth, the temperature, the gravity, the volatile distribution, CO2 distribution. And what's the most important thing you look at here? That our planet is a changing environment. Our planet change. We tend to think that our planet does not change and it's here forever, and it's not true. Our planet change and it change in a very fast way. We also have many missions that, that are oriented toward the astronomy, the planets, the exploration of Mars, Jupiter, Titan, uh, many very far environment. One of the things I wanted to show you, we all tend to not to believe in the climate change. This picture here, I like it a lot, and it shows how much water we lost in the last uh, in the last years. It's basically between 2005 2008 we lost about 25% of the melting in the poles of the Earth. And that is an alarming sign that climate change and our planet is changing in a very fast way. And make no mistake, no human is stronger than nature. No government is stronger than nature. So if you don't understand how nature changes, you can hardly survive on the planet Earth. And remember that the dinosaurs 
who are way larger than the humans and more stronger than humans have disappeared because of a natural event. So our ability to survive on this planet is our ability to understand how it is evolving. And in many times we, we think that the climate change is, is basically happening in the polar area only, in the, in the ice caps, but it is also happening in desertic environment, which we don't tend to understand very well how the desert we live in behave to the impact of the climate change. This is one example that I like a lot. This is, is a visible image of the Sahara in the south of Egypt. And when you see this image, it's 100 kilometer by 60 kilometer. You don't see any uh, evidence of water running. And in fact, if you use the radar technology we have to see what lies beneath the, the subsurface, you see this. You see the difference here and here. You see this huge network of water that were, that were one day flowing in the subsurface. Today, these are the dry network, but they witness that 10,000 years ago, the Sahara was wet. 10,000 to 100,000 years ago, the Sahara was wet and had a lot of water running at its surface, and the climate have changed, and now it's a, it's a desertic environment. And so when you go to the surface, you see that basically there is no evidence of that. So we mapped this in many places using the mission we have. Uh, it's called Sir A, and we were able to map that also in Sudan, Egypt, Libya, and Chad, in, and in Saudi Arabia also. So to make a long story short, people tend to think that climate change will not impact anyone. And in fact, if this is exactly the same way we were 20 years ago when people, when they talk about the impacts. So who heard about the uh, asteroids and the comet's impact in the news? There was one a uh, few weeks ago about uh, uh, the impact that hit in, in Russia. So everyone, they think that they are immune to this impact, that only this happened to the other. And in fact, in 1994, we witnessed a very rare event an asteroid who dissolved in 12 pieces and hit Jupiter, and we were able to watch that in real time. So humanity was able to watch for the first time an impact happening on another planet. And if Jupiter wasn't there, we would not be here today because that impact would arrive to the Earth and we would not be here. So again, why Mars? Is it because we have a lot of money to waste, so we're studying Mars? No, because Mars is the sister planet of the Earth. Mars and the Earth are two sister planets. If you understand how water disappeared on Mars, you can understand how water will disappear one day on the Earth. So those two sister planets, they, they, lived, they, they have the same history and potentially the same future. So if you understand how they evolve, you can predict the future of the Earth. And Mars today is a dry planet. It actually, it's a small planet, so if you put the map of the United States, that's how big will be the United States on Mars. Doesn't mean that the United States have occupied Mars, but that's mean basically it gives you an estimate of the surface. Mars, just like the Earth, have two uh, 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 ice cap, one in the north and one in the south. So it's really very similar. Mars is just like our the hazard. It's a, it's a dusty place where you see a lot of the dust at the surface, like the one you see on these uh, images here from the uh, Pathfinder the, and the Spirit and Opportunity rover, and these also from the Viking rover. And you see a feature that you recognize, Mars, that Mars have dust uh, storms, a lot of the dust storms. So, we also see images that Mars had fluvial activity. So these wadis are just like the one you see in desertic environment here. So as a conclusion, we think that Mars was one day a blue planet. And the blue planet Mars was is our planet today on the Earth. So Mars is really the future of the Earth. And the more results we have from the Curiosity rover, the more we can see that. So I would like to show you that the 3 mission I worked on, the Mahas Express mission,